And now a message from our sponsor. Starting off the news this week, a worm has been found off the coast of Scotland, with eyes both in its head and in its bottom. In a survey carried out by the Joint Nature Conservation Committee, Thomson Environmental Consultants and Marine Scotland Science. The 4mm worm, which has been named Ampharite oculicerata, was found in relatively shallow waters, adding more to the ever-growing excitement of the mysteries of undiscovered marine life. In other news, a research team at the University of Portsmouth have found that dogs have evolved a muscle that can dramatically raise the inner eyebrow, seemingly for the communication of humans. The study compared the facial structures of wolves and dogs, finding this to be the only major difference between the two. The muscle allows for a facial expression similar to that of a human infant, and that of the sad expression of humans. This would trigger a nurturing response in the human that it is shown to. Dr. Kaminsky, who led the study, says that this may be a result of humans' unconscious preferences that influence selection during domestication. Also in this week's news, a new species of trilobite has been described from Cambrian-aged rocks on Kangaroo Island in South Australia, and it has a great name. This is the new king of the trilobites, Redlichia rex. This species is the largest Cambrian trilobite found in Australia. And for decades, these bigger animals had been included in another species, until the publication of this paper when it was suggested that they should be classified as unique organisms. Redlichia rex could grow up to between 25 and 30 centimetres long, and some fossils of this species preserve incredible soft tissue anatomy, including digestive structures and another reason for its title as rex, the presence of powerful legs with spines used for crushing and shredding up prey items. Next, a very interesting paper was published that details the description of two isolated teeth originating from Yukon, Canada, that belonged to an ancient species of Arctic hyena. The teeth were first collected in the 70s, but only now have they been confidently assigned to the hyena genus Casmoporthetes based on comparisons with hyena fossils from around the world. This is the first record of these animals from north of the Arctic Circle, but their presence here is actually not too surprising. Fossils of Casmoporthetes, or the running hyena as they are also known, have been found in Asia and the southern US, so they were assumed to have passed through the Beringia region at some point. Now there is direct evidence of this, though these teeth are actually younger than the oldest running hyena fossils in America. These animals would have probably hunted down Ice Age horses and caribou, and perhaps scavenged on mammoth carcasses as they survived in the cold climate across Siberia and the Yukon. Also in the news, you may remember that earlier this year, the massive Dicynodont Lysowickia bojani was named and described from the Triassic of Poland, and estimated to have a body mass reaching an incredible 9.33 tonnes. However, this week another paper was published that used a different method to estimate body mass, using 3D digital volumetric models instead of a regression formula based on the circumference of the fossilised long bones. As the long bones of Lysowickia are very robust with short, massive shafts, it was suspected that the mass may have been overestimated, and, indeed, this new paper finds this animal to instead range between 4.87 to just over 7 tonnes. The study therefore concludes that synapsids still had to wait until the Eocene before they could achieve their large body masses of 9 tonnes. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already to learn more about this world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds you. And if you have, we'll see you on Sunday.